10 turn potentiometer. What is it? How does it relate to hooking up a treadmill power supply? How does it differ from a single turn potentiometer? And what are some of the sizes and configurations that we can use them for? All that here on this video. Greetings fellow DIYer and welcome to my video. I got a question the other day that I didn't have an immediate answer for. I have a video talking about using two potentiometers, one larger potentiometer as far as the resistance that it provides, and one smaller potentiometer so that you can have coarse and fine speed control. I had someone make a comment that they had a setup that was utilizing all three terminals for the potentiometer. And sadly, that does not easily allow you to hook up two potentiometers. When you hook up two of these together to have a fine and a coarse speed control, you do it in series. So you have an in and an out on one potentiometer and the out on the one potentiometer goes to the in on the second potentiometer and then out. So you end up with two wires going to the power supply. But some power supplies use three, and that does not easily allow for a two potentiometer system where you have coarse and fine speed control. I can think of several treadmill type power supplies that people are using to power their shop tools that utilize all three terminals. The MC60, the MC70, the MC2000, those all utilize an H, W, and L. And with that H, W, and L setup, we don't have the two potentiometer option. So what do we do if we want to have really fine speed control? Well, in those situations, we still have an option. A 10 turn potentiometer. But before I get there, let me back up a little bit. What is a 10 turn potentiometer and how does it compare to a one turn potentiometer? Well, this is a one turn potentiometer. And I use the term one very loosely because if you watch this line over here, if I turn this potentiometer, it doesn't even make a full revolution. So really it's a three quarters turn potentiometer. What's important to know with these power supplies is that this is a variable resistor and it is going from its max resistance to no resistance in three quarters of a turn. And if you turn it just a little bit, you are getting a pretty significant jump in the change in resistance on this. But this is a 10 turn potentiometer. And that means that it works just as you would think it does. If I pull this knob off, and we put this knob on here. And now we begin turning it. It's gonna take a minute. There we go, we are at 10 turns. And what that does is that gives you the built-in fine speed control. Now, there is definitely a disadvantage. You can't turn it up very quickly. It definitely took me a little bit of time to turn it from all the way down to all the way up. But in most cases, if you're running a treadmill power supply, you are looking for something that allows you to slow it down and set it at a very specific RPM range. And using a 10 turn potentiometer, especially in those situations where you must use all three terminals, gives you the option for fine speed control. So potentiometers come with a high, a low, and a wipe. And basically what that means is one terminal is kind of a common terminal between the other two terminals. So let me explain on this potentiometer right here. On this basic configuration of potentiometers, the middle terminal is almost always the wipe. And then the high is either this one and this one, and the low is either this one or this one. And really the only way to tell 
is to put a meter on it. So what the high means is when you have it turned all the way down, you're going to have the resistance that the potentiometer is set at. In this case, we have 150K potentiometer. So there will be 150 ohms worth of resistance between this terminal and this terminal. And there will be basically no resistance between this terminal and this terminal. And as we begin to turn it, the resistance between this terminal and this terminal drops, and the resistance between this terminal and this terminal increases. The same is true of a 10-turn potentiometer, but there is one caveat. And the ones that I bought will have Amazon links in the description. I bought a 2K, I bought a 20K, and I bought a 100K. On these, this bottom terminal is your wipe. This furthest terminal from the bottom terminal is your high, and this middle terminal is your low. Again, if you're wiring up a potentiometer, it's always good to put a meter on it before you wire it up to know where exactly the power is flowing and how exactly it is working. So the advantage we have with this is now we can turn it quite a bit and only get a slight change in speed. This gives you fine speed control in those situations where you must use all three terminals. The downside to a potentiometer like this is they are very limited in size choices. You can get a single turn potentiometer in just about any size you could want. For most of the power supplies that I'm setting up, I want something that is in the 120K to 150K range. This 10 turn potentiometer does not cheaply come in that many sizes. The highest homage one that I could find that was not absurdly expensive was 100 kilo ohms. And depending on the power supply that you're setting up, that may or may not work for you. My bandsaw. I've installed one of these 100 kilo ohm 10 turn potentiometers because I wanted fine adjustment and I only wanted a single knob. In the case of that particular potentiometer, I had a max speed that I wanted to set. I did not want the bandsaw turning any faster than it had from the factory. So that meant putting a roughly 40 kilo ohm resistor in series with this. And what that does is allows me to turn this from all the way off to full speed without going any faster than the max speed on my bandsaw. Now that involved doing some measurements I used an optical RPM meter to measure how fast the wheel that the blade rides on was turning. And then I was able to do some math to get the feet per minute calculation that bandsaws are rated in. I then used the technique where you find the min, you find the max, and then you can adjust the homage to perfectly tailor your needs. And again, what I needed was something right around the 140K range. What's nice with some of these 10 turn potentiometers is they come with a knob that counts which turn you're on. So you would have one through 10 in this little window, and then you have the numbers around the outside. And as I turn it, these numbers change. So you can look at the numbers and know where you are in the turn. That's super important because on a single turn potentiometer, you can put a start line and a finish line. And then you know where between those two lines you are at based on one single line on the knob. But on a 10 turn potentiometer, because it goes around 10 times, you don't know if you're on turn one or turn eight. So getting one that comes with a knob that has this little counter window is a nice thing to have and something that I recommend. So what do you do if you have set up the typical power supply that I've shown in a bunch of my videos and you need a 140 kilo ohm potentiometer or a 120 kilo ohm potentiometer and you don't want to just put a resistor in series. Because like I said, putting a resistor in series limits your top speed. What if you need to occasionally have max speed? Well, with this guy, you can do the opposite 
of what I did with my other power supplies with a coarse and fine speed control. Let's say I needed 120 kilo ohms. I can get a 20 kilo ohm potentiometer. I have this 100 kilo ohm potentiometer and you wire the two in series. And in doing so, the 100 kilo ohm is your fine feed and the 20 kilo ohm is now your coarse speed. It's kind of ironic since the 20 kilo ohm is usually my fine speed control, but it just shows that you're gonna have to be turning the knobs quite a bit more to adjust that speed. But the advantage is you can more finely tune it in. So now that we've gone over what this is and what it does, like I said, it's pretty simple. 10 turns to go from full resistance to no resistance or no resistance to full resistance, depending on which terminal you are using. How does it affect a power supply that uses all three terminals? Well, let me show you with an MC60. So here I have a 10 turn potentiometer wired up. It is set up with H, W, and L. H is red, W is white, L is black. Standard setup for an MC60. And we're gonna turn it on. Power's on, you can see that that light has come on. Notice that I have heat shrink tubing on these. There's no reason to set up stuff like this and not put heat shrink tubing on it. You can get it for cheap at a place like Harbor Freight and it just adds a whole nother level of safety and protection. We begin turning this up. And the motor comes on. Now what I wanna point out is how slowly that is actually moving. Normally when you turn on an MC60, when it finally comes on, it's coming on at a pretty good clip. But right now it's running pretty slow and you can actually back it back off and slow it down even more. And because of the nature of this 10 turn potentiometer, you have the ability to do that. Now keep in mind, this is not putting out very much torque. So if you put a load on that, it is probably not going to spin. It's probably going to take a little more to get it going. But the potential is there with the 10 turn potentiometer to get it to slower speeds. Speed her back up. And because it takes a fair amount of a turn, you can get that speed exactly where you want it, especially if you have a digital RPM meter hooked up to your system. So if you're using a power supply that requires all three wires, I recommend a 10 turn potentiometer. It will give you the fine speed control you may be looking for. If you like what you've seen, please click like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.